How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I wanted to actually do a back to basics tutorial because I go into a lot of details in tutorials about how to do specific things, but I realize I've never actually done a kind of simple overview tutorial of Premiere Pro. So I'm going to start with today by explaining the toolbar. Let's go. So depending on the layout that you've got going in Premiere Pro, uh, your toolbar might be in a number of places. For me, it's right here. This is where you have all of your various tools that you will use while you're editing, or at least that you should try and be using while you're editing, because they're designed to speed up your process. And I know that a lot of people don't necessarily know what all of these tools do. They'll stick to like two, three, four of them maybe, and that's all that they'll need or they think they'll need during an edit. But I think it's important to know what every single tool does because you might find actually that can really speed up your workflow the way that you tend to edit. So let's start from the top and work our way down. First of all, we've got the selection tool. Now the selection tool is basically like your mouse. You use it to select things, pick them up, drag them, change values. That's, that's basically it, it's a mouse. And depending on how your keyboard shortcuts are set up, the selection tool should be V. You can remember that because if you look at your V, it kind of looks like a mouse. It looks like a selection tool. And so with the selection tool, you can select different clips. You can do things like change values and scale and that kind of thing. Lovely stuff. All right, next up, we have the track select tool. Now, by default, it's set to forward. So you hit A on your keyboard. And an easy way to remember that is that when you're selecting everything in a document, you would normally do command or control A to select all. So imagine that this is like that. You're selecting everything forward. So you're selecting all forward A. So as I said, by default, it's going forward. Now you can hold this and actually show backwards as well. Or you can alternate by going shift A and A, and that way you can get forwards and backwards. And what this does is it will select all of the layers forward of your mouse, of your cursor, of those two arrows. Everything that is to the right of that will be selected. So I can select both of those clips because where I'm clicking is including that clip, or I can just select that clip by clicking there. And that way it doesn't include that one. Now, if you have multiple clips, let's say like that many, but you just want to select that row. Well, you click, it's selecting everything. Well, a way around this to make it single track selection is to hold shift. And you see when you hold shift, it becomes one arrow. And now you can click anywhere and it will select just the items on that track and any items that are linked to it. So like audio tracks, that kind of thing. So for example, you can select those two or you can just select the one and anything forward of that. And then the same thing for backwards. Okay, then we've got the ripple edit tool. And this is one that I, I'm surprised that not many people use when they're editing. If you select the ripple edit tool here or B, and what the ripple edit tool will allow you to do is to actually click on the in point or the out point of a clip on your timeline, and it will slide that in and out point on the source of your footage. So that clip, and then depending on how longer or shorter you've made it, everything else that's around it will adapt by that number of frames as well. So everything will stick together in the magnetic timeline type of thing that you get with Final Cut. So for example, this lemon chopping here, let's say that actually I want the knife to be coming in a little bit earlier. So I wanna see a bit more of the knife hovering over. Okay, so let's extend it to there. What's happened there is that that clip hasn't overlapped this one as you would expect it to. It's actually just lengthened the entire clip. So it's actually ended up being longer. Now to show you another example, this first clip here, I might say, well, actually, I'd like the out point to be a little sooner, like when I'm just touching that lemon. I can do that, and this clip will automatically shift back that same number of frames that I've removed from the original clip. So everything sticks together. It doesn't create these blank spaces in your edit. Everything sticks together nice and tight. All right, then if we click and hold that, we'll reveal what the other ones are. The next one is the rolling edit tool, or N on your keyboard. I actually use this one all the time when I'm fine tuning subtitles or if I'm editing to a beat and I've got the cursor exactly where I want it on the beat, I just select this and drag. And what it's gonna do is shift the out point of the previous clip and the in point of the next clip at the same time so that they move together without disturbing any of the other clips that are around it in your edit. It means that you can adjust the in and out 
on the fly. You don't have to go into the clip and then change the in point and then go down and adjust it and drag stuff and there, there. No, you just, you lengthen one clip at the expense of the other in that value of frames. And then if we click and hold, the last one in that menu is the rate stretch tool. Now the rate stretch tool, again, use it all the time if I'm doing slow motion stuff because I don't necessarily want to have to drag a load of clips onto my timeline, hit Control or Command R, bring up the speed settings and then decide what speed I want to put in there. I just, I just might want to fill a gap with something that is shot at a higher frame rate that I just I don't need to set it at a specific speed. I just need it to fill that gap. Well, it's quite easy. You just click on the end of your clip that is at a faster frame rate or a slower frame rate if you want to speed it up and just drag that going down and you'll see suddenly the speed is 195%. That's the equivalent of doing command or control R and going into your clip speed duration and typing 195%. So it's a nice quick and dirty way of over cranking or under cranking. So next on is the razor tool with C to cut. So with C, you just click anywhere and it will cut that clip right there. I don't really use this one because if you watched my previous tutorial on uh, getting speedier edits, well, I've actually mapped that control K command to that mouse button. So anywhere I press that where the playhead is, it'll just cut. So I don't really use the cut button, um, but I know some people who absolutely love it. One thing you might want to bear in mind though is that it is magnetic because it's playing on your mouse cursor. So if you're trying to get like three frames shaved off the end of an edit, well, you're gonna have to turn off snap with S. And if snap is turned off, then you can get nice and close to something. All right, next in the line is the slip tool with Y. Now the slip tool is a really great tool once again when you're trying to fine tune an edit. So you've got a bunch of clips already laid out all back to back in a timeline and you realize that you wish one of those clips just came in a little bit later in terms of its in and out points. Well, the slip tool basically allows you to take your in and out points from that clip and just slide them along in the same spacing, in that same amount of frames that you have selected for that clip on your timeline. So an example for that is this part here where I've already cut the lemon and then it's fallen over. I wanna actually include the knife cutting through the lemon. So I'm gonna click and drag towards the right because I know that that sequence happened before. So I'm dragging towards the right. It's basically like swiping right to get something to go away. And it's before my time. And so there we go. As I click and drag along, bam. Now the knife is starting to go through. So I've shifted the in and out points of that clip without disturbing any of the other clips around it and without changing the length of that clip. All right, the next one is the slide tool, which you get to with the letter U. Now the slide tool is kind of like the opposite of the ripple tool. What you're doing is moving one clip in the timeline without changing its in and out points, but everything else is going to adapt. So the in and out points of the clips to either side of that clip are either gonna get longer or shorter. So an example, this clip here, I can drag it this way and suddenly this clip has gotten shorter and this clip has gotten longer by stretching or shortening the in and out points of those clips. But this center clip that I've dragged has not changed. The only thing that's changed is where it appears in your timeline. All right, then we've got the pen tool if you wanna draw some fun things that you'll never use. And you've also got the rectangle tool if you wanna make cool rectangles that you'll never use. And then you've got the ellipse tool if you wanna make an ellipse that you'll never use. The second to last here, we've got the hand tool. Now the hand tool is pretty cool because it allows you to kind of go, if, if you've got a really big chunky timeline, it allows you to quickly move around it to navigate around it. Now, I don't know why Premiere Pro haven't implemented this, but in After Effects, there's a really handy feature that you can hold the space bar and it will automatically create the hand tool. So that when you release the space bar, it goes back to your pointer tool, to your selection tool. That's really great because it's super easy then to navigate around. You hold spacebar, navigate, let go, move stuff, right? I don't know why they haven't done that in Premiere Pro because it, it's not like holding the spacebar does anything. You can press it to start and stop playback, but holding it does nothing. So Premiere Pro, if you're watching, uh, implement that hold spacebar for hand tool because it's, it's really handy. Hey. All right, and then next up is Z for zoom. And zoom does pretty much what you would expect it to do. You click and it zooms in once, you hold Alt or Option and click and it zooms out once. What you can do is drag a selection and it will zoom in to that selection. Yeah, that's that's basically all you can do with zoom. 
All right, and the final one is the type tool. You've got T to click and drag to create a selection in your program monitor and type something fun. And it can be a title or it could be a subtitle. And that, my friends, is the toolbar explained. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. I'd like to make more of these where I kind of go into the basic user function of the interface and explain what things do rather than, you know, actually achieving a certain effect. Uh, let me know if you thought it was useful. If you did, I'll make more of them. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media. It's tips, tutorials, gear reviews, and monthly giveaways for filmmakers and photographers. See you next time. Stay hydrated.